Hi everyone. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to episode number 18 of Web Addicts TV. All right. And uh, hello, ninjas. <laughs> All right. Nice. Let's get going. Um, um, the first question is actually for Nick. All it right. says, Hi, Avinash. <laughs> I was going to punt it to him because it's hard. <laughs> What's the best way to integrate your website op optimizer multivariate tests with Google Analytics? I'm now solving it by firing virtual page views for each variation but I'm seeing huge differences in conversion between Optimizer and Analytics. Any other solutions? Uh, this one's from Pim in Netherlands. What All right, Pim. Yeah, so uh, the way you're doing it right now is probably suboptimal. Um, I like that word. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I got that one from you because <laughs> I'm answering your question. Um, so the, the traditional approach to solving this is uh, each experiment has an experiment ID, and mm -hmm. the idea is to pass that into a session-level custom variable in Google Analytics. So you pass the experiment ID from Google Website Optimizer as a session level custom variable in Google Analytics. That way you have the experiment ID to cross segment uh, oh. any of the reports in GA. So now you can look at any of the success criteria like time on site, engagement, goal conversion, internal site search, all around the different variations people saw. That's very smart. It's pretty easy to do <laughs> too. All right. Let's link. We'll put a link. Um, question for you, Avinash. This is from Pamela in St. Louis. Is there a way to get the page title to appear alongside URLs in a navigation summary report? Absolutely. You should use the thing that Nick has helped create, the API. <laughs> nice. So we'll, we'll, we'll add a link to the code site so you, people can go check out how to use the yeah. API. But this should be entirely possible with the API. You can get the names and the URLs. Ideally, you would want one or the other because in many sites, there's not a one-to-one -one mapping. And then your report actually looks kludgy. So if you don't have clean names for every single URL on your website, the report might look funky, or it might actually throw your data away, where one line, for one URL, there might be three entries on page titles, and they may appear in different places because of visits. Uh, so just be, just be careful about some of these things. Other than that, but you can use yeah. the API. Yeah, generally, if there's something that you want to see, and you see the data, but you can't see it in the normal interface, generally the API it is the solution working. for everything. Makes sense. Cool. Uh, here's a question for you, Nick. And it says, uh, it's from Pedro in Rio de Janeiro. All right. Hello, Rio. Brazil. Um, it says, I have an AdWords campaign that is integrated with Google Analytics. In the referent traffic, there are 48 clicks, but zero visits. Um, I put AdWords conversion code on the landing page URL. What can be wrong? There's several things that can be wrong in this case, Nick. Yeah. Um, would you like to share some insights? Yeah, so it, it sounds like um, your, your AdWords conversion tracking code is on a certain page. So Google Analytics and AdWords conversion tracking code are, are two separate products, Correct. two separate tracking codes. So you actually have to use the Google Analytics JavaScript tracking code and have that on all the oh. pages of your site. Um, and then we'll, we'll be able to, to track page views and visits for all those pages. Now, assuming that you've done that already, uh, I assume you have, um, you, you just want to make sure that you're not having any profile filters that are filtering out some of the pages. That's usually a, um, a, a misconfiguration that people sometimes do as well. You also want to make sure that if there's any redirects, yes. so if you're sending uh, traffic from AdWords to your site and it's redirecting through a bunch of servers, it might be stripping off some of the uh, tracking parameters, and then Google Analytics can attribute that back to AdWords. So just make sure that you're not doing redirects that strip off parameters, and you're not filtering them out in profile filters. And the landing pages are tagged. Very, very important. Absolutely. Landing pages are tagged. That's yeah. probably the start. Exactly. Um, so another question for you, Nick. Um, um, and from Lothari in uh, New York. And uh, the question is, what is the best way to prevent URLs tagged with GA campaign parameters from being indexed in addition to the canonical URL by Google? Is there a way to present this, prevent this other than the realm canonical meta tags to every page on my site? I'm afraid that I think is the only way. The only way is to use the canonical link, yeah. And, and I mean, at the end of the day, there's going to be any, you, anybody can put query parameters onto any links point to your site. We just happen to use specific ones for analytics to do a little bit more tracking. Um, so at the end of the day, the, the URL will still be the same. So canonical is the, the only solution for that. Exactly. In fact, I use URL shorteners in my social media tweeting when mm -hmm. I link to other websites. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes, the, the, the tool I'm using automatically adds Google Analytics URL parameters to the link automatically. Oh, automatically, yeah. And so even if your site is actually not using Google Analytics, if I am linking to you, You'll be using I'm analytics. adding those in, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm sending them to oh. your site anyway. Um, so it's actually a best practice to have the canonical URLs. Use the canonical, and that should and, work And for also, you. canonical yeah. URLs are supported by Bing and Yahoo and other search engines as well. So it's not just for Google. But I didn't actually, know Baidu supports it. OK, Baidu, I don't know. <laughs> gotcha. But I do know that Bing and Yahoo were a part of the original alliance that proposed awesome. it. 
So it should work without all search engines. Always sure. a good, good practice, best practice. Great answer. Okay, so here's a question for you, Avinash. This is from Casper in Denmark. Hi, Avinash and Nick. Our chief developer who is in charge of our website doesn't want to move the asynchronous tracking code up in the header because he is worried about the site not loading if the GA.js code isn't available. What's the downtime of GA.js? So let me let me first answer the last question. The, the, there is, we have had a few um, outages on Google Analytics uh, over the years, uh, substantially less than pretty much all service providers out there. There's a dashboard that is available publicly for you to review as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nothing. It's really nothing. Um, but I do want to point out that we do encourage people to put GA.js code, the current version of the code, before the end of the body tag. And that best practice simply exists because in, in the godforsaken chance that you know everything is frozen over in the world, um, there's <laughs> no GA.js is down, your site will still load fine. That's the reason. Right. Now the what is the point of asynchronous tracking? The, the precise point of asynchronous tracking, actually, the reason it was developed, right. is that it was <laughs> asynchronous, which means that your site continues to load. And God forbid Google, or let's say you're using any other tool, they're down. Um, it has absolutely no impact on the loading of your website. So in fact, I would encourage your, your architect to go to a mini re-education camp <laughs> And, and just come up to speed with this kind of technology because the reality is that the async code was indeed developed for a scenario where the, the slowness or disappearance of the JavaScript code has nothing, zero impact on your site loading. So I encourage you to send them to a mini re-education camp, send them the document. It outlines this really, really clearly. And let's make sure all Danish sites in the world, awesome Danish sites in the world, are tagged with the async code because it collects more data more accurately more data more accurately. I, like I, I, I love async, so get on it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you, Nick, and this was Sandeep Chetri in New Delhi, India. Um, <laughs> another one that says, hi, Avinash. <laughs> what is up with that? <laughs> <laughs> now we know who answers these questions. <laughs> I have a question. What, do, what does other signify in the top landing pages report? It shows some tra percent of the traffic on my website, uh, high bounce rates. When I drill down, it shows zero data. How do I see top landing pages in the other and how to improve it? And, and the other category will show up in um, different reports than landing pages as well. Right. It has to do with some structural way uh, with GA. So what's, what's the answer to Nick? Well, so in a small majority of cases, people actually have an other page. And so it's the actual <laughs> page title. But in the, w within all other cases, <laughs> Uh, what happens in Google Analytics is that um, you know there, there's a lot of data that you guys are sending us and we're processing it. And so some of the reports, we pre-aggregate some of the data so that way it makes the reports a lot faster to generate. So in the cases where we pre-aggregate data, um, each day for that report, we'll only aggregate the top 50,000 rows of data. So in that case, if your page is below the, you know, if you have 100,000 pages on your site, uh, and one of the pages, you know, everything after 50,000, we'll put it into a bucket called other and report that. So that's what you're seeing. You're, you're, you're collecting more data than we're aggregating the data for. Um, so, so no data is being lost. It's all being collected and put together. The sums will still be the total. Correct. It's just when you drill down into the individual pages, those specific reports will show you other. So the, the solution most people do is they'll create what's called a profile filter, and they'll create a profile that has a subset ah. of those reports, so it's less than 50,000, and that way they can get all the data for that. Oh, perfect. That, that's a good. So, well, yeah. Let's link to that. We'll link. We'll link. Most people don't realize that you yeah. can go beyond 50,000 unique on a day. It's amazing what you could do with this product. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even in sales. <laughs> Another one for you, Nick. And it says, hi, Nick and Avinash. It's from Will in Virginia. Um, when I'm looking at my Google Analytics data, I see a lot of referrals coming from the homepage of the website itself. If the website I'm analyzing is www.will.com, why would the domain be the source of the referral traffic? Thanks. Yeah. Very common happens all the time. It, it happens a lot. Sadly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the, what usually happens is there's a re redirect uh, maybe happening, so that way we, we think that you're coming from the site. And sometimes it's an incorrect setup of, of the way you're doing the tracking. Uh, sometimes it could be from iframe. So what I would do is I would, I would look back to make sure that all the tracking is coming from is on your domain. So there's a host name report in the product. Mm. Go take a look at the host name. That's the domain that you're sending data to analytics and make sure that's always the, your exact domain name. Um, if it isn't, if there's a bunch of different parameters there, then you need to reconfigure how you're doing the tracking. 
uh, we could link to a doc on how to set the domain name. Exactly. Also, also I think, uh, Nick, if I have uh, Kaushik.net, the mm -hmm. homepage of my site, and it's not tagged, sure. and then the rest of my site is tagged, in that case, my site will show as a self-referrer because you came to the homepage, you clicked on a link, went deeper into the site, but because there was no tag on the homepage, it will show a self-referrer. Yeah, usually we try to have the JavaScript so it, it can detect that. I so see. It's a smart JavaScript. Oh, good, 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 good. But uh, so that sometimes is the case. I see. Um, more often than not, people haven't configured the domain okay, name got it. of the tracking code. for the. So it, it has to do with the cookies. The cookies are tied to a domain name. I you see. have to make sure the cookies are set to the right domain. So And, we'll, and, and the redirect issue. And the redirect, redirect issue. Okay, got Absolutely. It. Got it. Good, good question. So uh, the next question is for you, Avinash. Uh, Andre from Andre Scholten in the Netherlands. Uh, hi, Nick and Avinash. You answered the question how you should track banners for internal campaigns with the answer UTM tagging. But in my opinion, that will totally mess up your external campaign tracking data. So this was a question from last week where we were where we both had two solutions. Avinash said one solution, and I said the the correct solution. I think your answer <laughs> might not have might have been suboptimal. <laughs> So uh, I love it. No, so actually, this is true. Good question from Andre. Um, you can do it the way that I said, and it may work. Um, but the reality is that uh, what Nick said with event tracking is a substantially better way to do it. Um, and so we strongly encourage that if you want to analyze the internal campaigns. Uh, so for example, you're running some ads uh, on some of your homepage that are driving people to other pages on your website, mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. products. Um, then using event tracking is, a, is the way to go. And with the release of events as goals in Google Analytics v5, um, you can actually do reporting better as well with, sure. the, uh, with the method that Nick had suggested. Yeah. So let's make sure that if we do internal tracking, we use um, event tracking to yeah, do yeah. that. Um, Make sense? And, and so there, there is another solution. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use the internal site search functionality uh, to, to track some of these things, and some people like to do it. Uh, Justin Cotroni wrote a nice article. We'll link to how do you do it. Um, the, only, the only consideration is if you use his approach, then you can't use internal site search track. Uh, you, know, <laughs> you can't use it for what we designed yeah. it for. So it's but an option, but it's an option that you should consider also as well. No. <laughs> they can do what they want. <laughs> hey, it's a free product. No, but um, uh, look into event tracking. I, I, I agree with Nick's answer the last time around where it is the scalable, proper way to do it. Your data is stored separately in a nice, clean way. doesn't take away the option of you to, for you to do internal site search tracking. If for any reason that you find uh, event tracking not appealing, um, then you could go down this route. But the yeah. correct answer is to use event tracking. I like it. Got it. Nick, here's a question for you from Walter Boy in Wellington, New Zealand. Hello, New Zealand. Um, I'm trying to find a way to combine list of all search terms used from a section or group of pages on our site. I can find the search terms for individual pages via Start Pages Report, but I can't work out how to get a multiple page report. Here's another way yeah, yeah, where yeah, your yeah. work comes into help. If you use the API, you can do all this. So again, if, you, if, if there's a customization like this where you know the data is there but you can't get it, most likely the API will solve it. Um, so, so there's partners, we can link to a bunch of partners who, who can help build the solution for you or third-party applications that make it easy to do this. Um, if you, the, other, the other option you actually have here, I just thought about this you know, on the fly, is uh, you can actually group pages using custom variables. Uh -huh. So if you have sections of your site, like for example, the sports section, you use a custom variable and then look at the keywords by custom variable mm. using a custom report. Set of, set of visit levels session or a hit level? A page, page, page level, level. Page, page level for a group of pages, group them together and look at all the ah, keywords yeah. that, that, that came to the, that, those pages. Very clever idea. Actually, if you try it, Walter Boy, email us. Let us know how it worked. I, I think it's a very clever way to do this. It could work, yeah. Another one for you, just a few miles away from Melbourne in oh. Shane, so not very far away. Uh, is there a way to see full reverse goal paths for cross domains and subdomains? I have set allow link, underscore link, and host name to URI by filter. I, this is Japanese, I think. <laughs> now, tr now traffic leaving my site.com shows as exits uh, and traffic to buy.site2.com are seen as new entrances. What is this? I don't think you read it very clearly, actually. So I think what he, let me summarize and then answer it. So what I think he's doing is he has two sites. And what's happening is that he's seeing exits from one site it, as, and entrances to the other site as one in, in in the same profile, and he ideally wants to see them reported together. Mm. So when you want to, when you're tracking across multiple domains, you need to configure the JavaScript code to make sure that referrals from site A don't look like entrances to site B. That visitors persist across both sites, and it all looks like one session. 
That said, you might want to track how many times people do go between the different domains. And so if you're using a, a tracking like, um, you know, the cross domain tracking methods, what you can use is event tracking as well within those trackings. So every time people click from domain A to domain B, mm -hmm. you track an event, and one parameter you pass is the first domain, and the second parameter is, is the domain two. So that way, when you're looking at your event reports, you can see for a particular domain, oh. you could drill in to see where they went to and the number of times that happened. Very um, nice. So use event tracking when you're crossing and make sure you, you set it up properly. That's, that's nice, yeah. I mean, another advanced solution where, you know, is in Melbourne, maybe maybe our um, partners in Australia can help him with that. We have that. some good partners in Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rod, Rod's yeah. company. We we'll should go to we'll Australia. We'll link, we'll link to Rod's company. Okay. Um, okay, another one for you, Nick, especially for you. Podcast on iTunes, I second the request. Maybe you can take Steve to lunch and tell him most of your six billion listeners also buy Apple products. Actually, Nick uses Apple, I, I use a PC computer, but we use lots of Apple products here at Google. Um, this is from Scott in Sacramento. Yeah. Nick, what is up with this? You promised the people I know. podcast. I was so busy answering these questions, I didn't have a chance to upload it to iTunes. It's something we're looking at, we want to do, we hope to do it. Just, the, 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 it's to be determined when, when it gets done. Good. So here's a question for you, Avinash, from Richard Hearn from Red Cardinal. Uh, hi, Nick and Avinash. Can you tell us a little bit about the product roadmap for Google Website Optimizer? The product hasn't had any major updates for quite a while now, and it would be great to learn what new features and testing abilities are coming. Thanks. Yeah, so Richard, it's, it's, it's a great question, and, and the team has been working really hard to do some big things um, that you will see soon. Uh, unfortunately, we, we don't comment on forward-looking things um, um, at Google, so I'm afraid that we can't tell you what's coming, what not, but stay tuned, you're gonna hear a lot of things. There are a lot of exciting um, AB and multivariate testing products in the market. Uh, Optimizely is one of my favorites. Uh, I'm using Visual Website Optimize, another one. Tons of them, so, so definitely keep your interest in testing alive, keep trying other products, um, that are also in the marketplace, because in the end, we want great experience to be created for your consumers, whether you use Google products or not. Uh, but there is more to come from the Optimizer team as well in the near future. Uh, I like how you answered that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here's a question for you, Avinash, from Greg in Portland, Oregon. Uh, we're trying to measure the success of our video SEO efforts, video sitemaps, etc. Is there a way to segment organic search traffic by visitors who clicked on a video result that was embedded into the regular search results rather than text? Yeah, so, so this, is a, this is a very good question, um, Greg. Um, uh, and unfortunately, you can't do that in Google Analytics off the, off the cuff. Uh, but what you can do is use um, uh, our Webmaster Tools product. Phenomenally excellent product. When you get down to the query reports in Webmaster Tools, on the top nav, you will notice that there is a drop down that says all search, or it will give you images, video, mobile, et cetera. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So you can actually start to see a little bit more insights into this kind of a request. So I encourage you to explore the the Google Webmaster Tool products to see what you might be able to find there. So that that might be a good place to go. Um, from Lothar in New York uh, for you, Nick. Mm -hmm. it says, is it possible to view match search query in Google Analytics even when auto tagging is off? Uh, I'm currently not able to use AdWords auto tagging, but it seems like it's causing match search term not to be captured. Thanks. By the way, I love match search query because what we show by default is the keyword that you bid on, or right, right, and, right, and, right, and right, I think right. that's suboptimal. You want to see? So you, you might have actually bid on on the keyword Nick, um, but it actually got matched with a query Web Analytics rocks the most TV show rock star Nick. That's the query that got matched. Everybody searches on that <laughs> one. <laughs> in which case, actually, it's more prudent to actually analyze the second yeah. the query that was actually typed in browser because you would never imagine that anybody would type that term. I would never imagine anybody <laughs> bid it on my name. <laughs> but, but, type it. But, and, and that's why so I, I strongly encourage everybody to use the match type query. But, but yeah. so Nick, the question. is it possible to get that without <gasps> auto-tagging? With AdWords. No. So auto tagging. Oh, you're killing me. The, we have a really uh, deep integration with AdWords. And so that's one of the values that we get from the deep integration. So without being able to do auto tagging, we can't map back to the auction, which means we can't pull the data and do those reports. So you need auto tagging. You should talk to the people to make sure you can enable it because it'll give you a lot more data. Uh, it's very valuable. And that's just only one of the values. There's a bunch of additional uh, values that we give you when you turn it on. 
Exactly, and, and in fact, uh, if you go into AdWords, you should still be able to get this data. So in AdWords reporting, yeah. this data is available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you lose all the other the data and usage. bounce rate and all yeah, that, yeah, but, yeah. but anyway, you got that. So, so those are all the questions we had. Let me thank a few people for feature request. Uh, Nick from Bath uh, had a really nice uh, feature request. We got uh, feature requests from a couple more people. Uh, here we go. Uh, Zamardz <laughs> from New York had a great feature request on profile activity. We got Mayer in Israel had a really great feature, uh, feature request, request for custom variables. Um, so we'll pass this on to the team. Uh, but with that, we come to the conclusion of episode number 18 of Web Analytics TV. Web, uh, version 5 of Google Analytics is out and available to all our users now. On the very top nav, when you log into Google Analytics, click on the new version. There's some really amazing stuff. I personally love the new custom reports. It's, it's the, probably the best enhancements that is available in um, V5. Please check that out. Nick, you got a quick plug for anything you love in V5? I like events as goal. I wrote a blog post. We'll link to it. But the fact that now you don't need page views, but you can use actually event tracking to set goals. You can actually set the goal value to the value you send from the event. It's quite powerful. Everybody should use it. So on, on my blog, the, the, the fake page views I'm creating when people We're click to go to Amazon, them. I'm going to switch to yeah, events. Yeah, yeah, events. There you go. So. Hope you had fun in this episode. Please uh, click on the link on the top right and go to the moderator site where you can submit questions for our next episode or rate questions submitted by mm -hmm. other people. Happy analytics.